section, I'd like to welcome our attendees to the new Waste Calc measurement training, uh, which is a step-by-step -step guide through updated features in our 2019 version. Uh, we bring this webinar to you in partnership with our friends at the Hinkley Center for Solid Weight and Hazardous Waste Management. Uh, our presenters for today are Dr. Timothy Townsend and Carson Klein. Before we get started, I wanted to go over just a few basic housekeeping rules that will uh, guard for today's webinar presentation. All attendees are in listen-only mode, and we ask that you please use the questions tab located in the toolbar to submit a question. Uh, these questions will be answered at the end of the presentation. And also, the session is being recorded and will be available on the DEP website for sharing. I'd like to introduce you to today's panelists. Starting us off is Dr. Timothy Townsend. Dr. Townsend is a professor in the Department of Environmental Engineering Sciences in the Engineering School for Sustainable Infrastructure in the Environment at the University of Florida. Dr. Townsend teaches and conducts research related to solid and hazardous waste management. His courses cover subjects such as waste management fundamentals, landfill design, recycling, construction and demolition debris, and waste management in developing countries. He has published many papers and research reports on topics related to bioreactor landfills, recycling, construction and demolition debris, waste leaching, beneficial use of solid waste, and special waste such as electronic scrap. His recent book is entitled Sustainable Practices for Landfill Design and Operation. Also presenting is Carson Klein. Carson Klein is a graduate student in the Department of Environmental Engineering Sciences in the Engineering School for Sustainable Infrastructure in the Environment at University of Florida. She is a research assistant to Dr. Townsend, focusing her studies on sustainable materials management and solid waste composition. Previously, she completed her bachelor's at Campbellsville University in Environmental Sciences and Mathematics. She is scheduled to complete her master's in August 2019. I'd like to now turn the presentation over to Dr. Townsend and Carson Klein. Okay. okay. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Chris. This is Tim Townsend at University of Florida. And on uh, behalf of University of Florida, the Hinckley Center, and of course, the Department of Environmental Protection, we're here to give you an overview of the new waste count version that you will be using. I'll be giving a part of this presentation, but most of the substantial information that you'll get is going to be Carson, who's been working on this with a number of other students over the past year. Okay, got that worked out. So what we're gonna to cover today, um, briefly, just a quick note about the importance of waste reporting and tracking. Um, I'll talk just briefly about the role of waste calc so that we're all on the same page. Carson's then gonna dive in and she's gonna give you an overview of the older version of waste calc, which many of you are familiar with using and then really focus on the features that have been updated in the newer version give you a little bit of a comparison between the old and the new version so you have an understanding of that. And then I'll jump back in at the end to share with you some of the thoughts and discussions that we've been having with the department about updating waste calc in the future to incorporate some other features. So if you don't know this already, Florida has one of the most robust sets of data in the United States with regard to solid waste management in terms of how much is produced, its fate, how much goes to landfills, waste energy facilities and recycling, as well as the composition. So if you didn't know that, please understand that most states in the U.S. do not have as complete a set of data in a tracking system like we do here in Florida. Now, of course, there are a number of parties who play a role in this. Um, in terms of providing information and helping refine these estimates. Local governments, of course, play a huge role in terms of gathering this information, providing it to the DEP, 
and helping make sense of this information. The waste facilities and the materials handlers, whether they're landfills or recycling facilities, waste energy facilities, all play a major role, as of course does the Department of Environmental Protection in terms of taking this information, interacting with local government, and providing other necessary data. Now, waste tracking results, all of this information which is collected, which waste calc is a, a part of, these are used to measure progress and to guide policy in future directions in the state. As you know, Florida tracks the data pretty closely with respect to how waste is managed. Just to give you some flavor of that, this is the type of information that, again, Florida is known for doing a, a good job of keeping track of. This is the 2016 and 2017 waste management pie chart for the state of Florida, where you can see the amount landfilled, recycled, and combusted. The state tracks the total amount of waste that's generated, as well as the recycling rate. And as you know, in Florida, we have a what we call a traditional recycling weight and then a recycling rate that includes everything, uh, well, including those waste to energy credits. This past year, from 2016 to 2017, the most recent set of data, there was an increase in waste uh, collected. Now, that really was more a result of more accurate numbers for the tons disposed of in landfills that ultimately resulted in a decrease in the recycling rate. Again, it's just part of the state's overall effort to get the best set of numbers and the most accurate set of data possible. And as you also all know, the challenge we face in the state of Florida is uh, trying to meet up to that statutory goal of 75% recycling by 2020. And as I think most of you are aware, that's probably um, not something that's going to be reached. And so as we continue to develop waste calc and as the department continues to try to get the best set of data available for waste and materials handling in the state, we also have in the back of all of our minds, what's the next step? Where do we go from here? I'll hint about some of the things that we might be able to use waste calc for as part of that future uh, direction setting and goal setting. Now, just real quick, waste calc is necessary uh, to get some of the information that is currently tracked in the state of Florida. Now, right now, local governments in assistance with uh, or with assistance from facilities and then the department will collect information on the total amount of collected tons, the total amount of recycled tons, landfill tons, combusted tons. Now, when it comes to recycling numbers, typically you're gonna have estimates or measurements of the amount of aluminum cans or plastic bottles, et cetera, that are collected. So you know the tons of each, but we don't have that kind of information when it comes to landfilling or when it comes to the materials that go to a waste to energy facility. This is just a tonnage for the entire mixed waste stream. So where waste calc comes into play is, is that uses data such as composition studies from different locations throughout the state to be able to help make that estimate of what the overall waste composition is in the state of Florida. And again, Carson's going to go into much greater detail on that for you. The idea is that there are certain inputs that go into waste calc and then the output is MSW composition. And again, Carson will spend a good bit of time describing this to you in much more detail. So what I'll do at this point is I'll hand it over to her. She's gonna review the model or the tool, um, hopefully provide you all the information you need to know to understand why it's different than the previous version and how to use it. And then I'll say a few words at the end. So Carson, you take it away. Hi everyone, like you said, my name is Carson. I'm here today to talk about the new waste cow compared to the old one and just get you guys familiar with how the new one works so you feel comfortable using it. So a little background again, Waste Calc is an online based waste composition calculator that was developed in the 2000s and it's available on DEP's website. It's used by county solid waste and recycling coordinators to determine a county's total MSW composition. And the results from, the, from Waste Calc are used for program planning and more specifically annual reporting purposes. So for reporting purposes, the results from WasteCalc are used in DEP's Retrack Annual Report. 
DEP requires this workbook to be completed annually by each county. I took a screenshot directly from the workbook and you can see it's a new recycling credits tab. The data needed to fill out this workbook consists of DEP certified and non-certified tons, as well as the results from WasteCalc. DEP sends out reports to each county annually, including population estimates, landfill tonnages, recycling tonnages, and C&D tonnages. The numbers reported by DEP are certified tons. Any additional material to be counted as being recycled that is not sent to a DEP certified recovered material dealer is considered a non-certified ton. If we look closely at the top left corner, you can see a column that says collected tons. The results from waste calc are used to fill in this column. So how does waste calc work? Um, as you all probably familiar, you go to the DEP provided website and you click a link that leads you to this intro page. The intro page tells the user how, why, when waste calc was developed, which we've already covered. So you would click the waste calc button at the bottom of the screen and it takes you to an input page like this, where the user inputs county population, landfill, combusted, and recycling tons. So with this input page, I'm gonna introduce a figure. And this is representative of the input screen we just saw, where we have the recycled tonnages for all 18 commodities, the total landfill tons, and total combusted tons. So the user fills out the input page, clicks submit, and WasteCalc goes through some behind the scenes calculations. Again, the purpose of waste calc is to determine the MSW composition within a county. Based on the input data, we have recycled tons by commodity, but we don't have landfilled or combusted tons by material. The amount of landfilled and combusted tons by material is determined by using EPA per capita generation data and adjusting this value to Florida counties by using waste composition data. So looking into behind the scenes calculation, here's a visual of Florida where the blue dots represent the waste composition studies used for development in the old waste calc. The 11 counties provided waste composition data, but that leaves 56 counties without. What the developers did was first organize the counties by decreasing population density. Then subjective adjustment factors were developed for each county without available data. Population density was chosen as a parameter because high density counties have population and commercial activity to generate more waste. High density counties generally have the ability to attract more tourists and seasonal residents to generate more waste in comparison to low density counties. Now to bring this figure back, we can see the input page with the values the user enters. You click submit, it goes through the behind the scenes calculations and the output is presented in percent MSW composition. And online, it looks like this. So keeping that figure in mind, I'm gonna talk about the new waste calc and what's been changed. So for the inputs, you can see that the recycled, landfilled, and combusted tons are exactly the same. The only thing that's different is an input value for collected C&D tons. This number is, a certi is the certified plus non-certified C&D collected from a county. This input value has been included because C&D is now more closely tracked by DEP and provides a more accurate result for the total MSW composition. Again, the user clicks submit and WasteCalc goes through some behind the scenes calculation where the US EPA data has been updated from the early 2000s to the most recent publishing and the Florida waste composition studies have been collected from 2002 to present. Again, um, taking the behind the scenes a little bit further, all the orange dot on this map represent the waste composition studies that were used to update the new waste calc. You can see 10 dots, which represent 10 counties with data on their waste streams, but this leaves 57 counties without data. So to estimate the MSW composition for counties without available data, a couple of things were done. First, the counties were organized by decreasing population density, and then they were grouped into categories with similar population densities. 
Within these groups, the disposed composition is only known for the counties with available data. The available data with each, within each grouping was a baseline for the disposal composition for the remaining 57 counties without data. To get the county specific composition, the reported ton, recycling tons for each county were added in. This method allows for waste calc to estimate the MSW composition for every county in Florida. So the output for waste calc is very similar to the old one where you have percent MSW composition. But the new waste calc also provides the tons associated with those percentages. Before, the tons were something that the user would have to calculate by hand so that they could enter it into the retract workbook. The department wanted to include the tonnages to save the user time and confusion when filling out the workbook. Another minor change is that the order of the categories have been rearranged to reflect the order listed in Retrack and the Retrack workbook. So now that you all have seen the new changes, we're going to run through a comparison of the old and the new waste calc and then do a step-by-step -step tutorial for, of the new waste calc. Because you all are familiar with the old waste calc, I've screenshot the input page filled out for Sarasota County. Now it's not super important that you read all these values. I just want you to understand that these inputs are for Sarasota County and the values were input for 2017. More importantly, I want you guys to see these results. Again, Sarasota 2017. And what we've done to make this a little bit easier to visualize is we've made this bar graph where the orange bar is the results from the old waste calc shown on the previous page. And the blue line, blue line represents the actual waste composition for Sarasota County. The actual waste composition was found using results from the 2017-2018 Sarasota waste composition study to represent the landfill tons. Reported recycling tons from 2017 were added in for the total waste composition. You can see looking at this graph that the estimations given by the old waste calc are not representative of Sarasota's actual waste stream. So keeping this graph in mind, we're going to move on and I'm going to go through the step by step of the new waste calc. So if you have an extra monitor or an extra hand, um, you can hopefully follow along with me. So let me toggle over here. So the best way to access the new waste calc is directly through DEP's website. So right now, if you were to Google waste calc, the old version would pop up and that's not what we're looking for. So we're gonna start on DEP's website. And the easiest way to get there is to go in the top corner in the search bar and type in waste calc. So here's the search page. You can see waste composition models where it notes waste calc. Of course, that's what we want. So we're going to click it. It says waste calc is a user friendly computer based model. And you'll just click this underlying waste calc and it brings you to the new input page. Um, as you're noticing, it already looks pretty similar to the old waste calc. So you can read the introduction, we'll click the waste calc tab, and it brings us to the input page. Um, as you're noticing, again, it still looks pretty similar, where we have the instructions at the top and the input sections at the bottom. Um, so let's take the time and start filling this out. So I'm going to stick to Sarasota because that's the data we've been using. And I'm looking at the 2017 waste stream. So that's what I'm going to click. Line two says select the county from the drop down line. So we'll click this. Scroll. if it will scroll to Sarasota. Now the rest of the lines, the input lines, um, are from the DEP certified and non-certified tons 
that either DEP reported to you or that you found um, along with your county. So that's where you're going to get the values to fill in the rest of the input page. Uh, so the population, again, was um, given by DEP. Number four says enter landfill tons plus the landfill combustor ash in line four. And number five is the new input value where it says enter collected C and D in tons. And again, the collected C and D tons is the certified C and D plus the uncertified C and D for your county. In line six, enter the net combusted MS or net combusted, yeah, which is zero. So I'm sure you guys are already getting the hang of it. And to save us some time, I went through and filled out the reported recycling on a different tab. So you all can see that it's filled out and complete. And all we're going to do is click submit. And it brings us to the results page. And now this results page is a little different than what you all are used to. So the first column has all 18 materials listed. The second column is representative of the recycle tons, where you have each commodity that you input on the previous page and the total at the bottom. The idea for this line is so the user can check to make sure the recycle tons add up to what they should be. And if they're not, then you can go back and all your data is still here. It doesn't erase it. So you can click your value, make your changes, click submit. So the third column is what WasteCalc originally provided. It's the percent MSW composition. And the fourth column has converted those percentages into tons. And like we said earlier, these tons are the ones that you would input into the collected tons column into the retrack annual workbook. So I hope that was simple enough. Um, like I said, there's not too many crazy changes, so it should make sense. Um, so now I'm going to toggle back to my presentation. And what I want to do is look at the results from what we just entered and compare it to set the 2017 Sarasota waste composition. So again, the blue line is representative of Sarasota County's actual waste composition, and the green is representative of the results from the new waste count. And they match up well because Sarasota's waste composition study was used in the development of waste count. So the other nine counties with waste composition studies will show similar results. For counties without waste composition studies, we expect the results to be accurate, but there's no available data to compare it to. So just a quick summary of the updates. All the data in the new waste count has been updated to EPA's most recent report and county-specific waste composition data has been updated by collecting studies from 2002 to present. An input value has been added, which is the collected C and D. The output for the waste count shows the percent and tons MSW collected, as well as the sum of the recycled composition. And the material categories have been rearranged to reflect the order of retrack. So moving on, uh, we want to talk about some potential future updates. Um, some of these weren't implemented now because we didn't want to overwhelm you guys with a big change. So um, I'm going to hand this back over to Dr. Townsend, and he's going to explain these to you. Okay. Thank you, Carson. Um, hopefully that helps you get an idea of the, uh, the new version of, of waste calc, again, not a tremendous amount of difference in terms of what you're going to have to do or what you're going to get out of it. <clears throat> but one of the things that we've been discussing with the department is their desire for some potential other updates. So I'd like to spend a few minutes as we wrap up 
discussing that. Specifically, getting some more composition study data, providing a little bit more output in terms of the material composition in each disposal category, potentially looking at some additional categories, and then lastly, incorporating some of the sustainable materials management concepts. Just real quick, if you look at the, the composition studies that were utilized in the latest waste calc update, you can see that there are certain gaps within the state of Florida where we didn't have any data. What we plan on doing uh, with the department in the next year or so is to go ahead and number one, identify some other waste composition studies, <clears throat> excuse me, that have been recently conducted, and then to go out and conduct a few additional composition studies to try to uh, fill in some of these gaps. Also, if you remember from one of Carson's earlier slides, we were talking about output in terms of uh, the tons recycled, but you know, on a materials basis. So the idea is in future versions, you'll be able to quickly see the tons of newspaper that was landfilled or the tons of food waste that went into a waste to energy facility. These data are essentially already calculated as part of the, the background, but we'll be presenting those as part of the output for waste count. And then one of the things that we talked about is in adding some new categories, for example, uh, electronics or e-waste, or perhaps there are other categories that aren't currently reflected that might be showing up in some of the waste composition studies or that there are data available for. And then lastly, as you've probably, many of you seen our group and the department talk about over the past year or two is the idea of going beyond just the tonnage. For example, if you look at Right now, the current model is you recycle a ton of paper, aluminum, and yard trash. They're all quid, uh, uh, treated equally. But as it turns out, depending on the particular outcomes that you're interested in, you might get more energy savings, for example, when you recycle a ton of aluminum cans versus a ton of yard trash. So the whole idea behind sustainable materials management is that we begin to look at other metrics besides just tons. This is just an excerpt from the recycling um, report, the Florida and the 2020 75% recycling goal that was put out by the department. And one of the conclusions that they cited was that at the federal level and at other state levels right now, a weight-based goal might not be the best approach for really targeting recycling. And so beginning to look at some other um, indicators or categories uh, beyond tons is something that's important. So the thought is, is that in some of these future waste count updates is kind of a way to introduce and integrate sustainable materials management thinking is in addition to providing what you're normally used to seeing in terms of the tons that are recycled or the percentage of your, your recycling rate, is you could also look at things like your energy footprint or an, an energy equivalent recycling rate. But you could do the same thing for water or your carbon footprint or your jobs footprint, any number of different things. The Hinckley Center has been working on developing these alternative approaches and with a big group of stakeholders in the state of Florida. Not being included right now as part of WasteCal, but in the future, this is one way to begin to introduce these concepts. So with that, Carson and I, thank you uh, for your time. We're happy to help. Um, try to answer any questions and I know the department is on the line as well and certainly if there are questions that um, you have that come up later I know the department and certainly we are happy to uh, answer those for you or do the best we can so thank you excellent thank you dr. Townsend very much uh, I'd like to take this time to open the floor for any questions that you guys might have I do see a couple of questions here from Delia in, in Collier County uh, Delia, I'm going to go ahead and unmute you so you can go ahead and ask Dr. Townsend and Carson the question directly. So I'm uh, going to go ahead up here, find you in the menu, and unmute you. All right, just might take me just a moment here, so please stand by. Okay. Here you are. Delia, you've been unmuted. Go ahead. Okay. Um, hi. Good morning, Dr. Townsend. I had a question. I actually had two questions. Um, so, Collier County just completed a waste composition study, and it was for seasonal and non-seasonal times. 
So I was wondering how we may be able to incorporate the county's um, waste composition study into this model in the future. Yeah, uh, so thank you for bringing that up. So when the Collier County composition was study was going on, we had just wrapped up the, the work on this. So the thought would be is, is that that would be integrated into the, the next version so that when you did your waste count run in the future, it would go back to that data and integrate that in. Okay, because we just finished, I believe in January, the our, our peak um, waste composition study. So now we have a full year of non-seasonal and seasonal. So i um, okay. not sure how to go about bringing that in. I mean, is it something that we need to submit to, um, to you directly or are you going to notify us? Yeah, I would suggest that uh, if you go ahead and submit that probably to, uh, to the department, Karen, if she doesn't already have it, and Suzanne and Chris, um, but we'd be welcome if you could send us a copy as well. Okay, all right, perfect. And then I did have one more question. Um, when Carson was um, explaining or going through the process in WasteCalc, I know that when she mentioned about the MSW tons that they were both certified and non-certified, I just wanted to confirm that the recycling tons were also certified and non-certified. Yes, the recycled are also certified and non-certified. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, I'm going to go ahead and unmute Karen. Karen, did you have a response for Delia regarding uh, her questions? I'm on the computer. <laughs> oh, I apologize then. I uh, I apologize. I was just going to see if Karen was able to answer that for you. Delia, we will get back to you as far as some of those reporting. Uh, I'd like to uh, go ahead and thank everyone for attending today's webinar. Again, both the folks uh, from the Hinckley Center for Solid and Hazardous Waste Management, Dr. Townsend and Carson Klein, thank you very much and all attendees. Oh, it looks like we do have uh, some questions too that have popped up here. Uh, Cletus uh, Kuhn has asked, does the new waste calc model take into consideration that some of the CND collected tons may already be included in the report landfill tons? So it does. The collected um, CND is the reported landfilled CND and recycled CND. But what we've also done is there's um, a factor for some of it that may end up in a landfill. Um, and so we have made that factor to cons like a, a class one, class three landfill um, that's not reported to a DEP C certified C&D facility. So we have taken that into consideration. Thank, thank you very much, Carson. Um, again, uh, I don't see any additional questions from our attendees. So I'd like to again uh, thank Dr. Townsend and Carson for their presentation today. Again, I'd like to let everybody know that this presentation will be available online with a link to our website. So uh, please feel free once we get this on. Generally, it takes about uh, 24 to 48 hours to get it up. But again, uh, on behalf of our members of the Hinckley Center, we here at Department of Environmental Protection would like to thank you for attending. Uh, 